In this video, let's see about flow cytometry. From the name itself, we can understand cyto means cells and metry means measuring or studying. Using this technique, we can study the cells that are moving as a flow, that is flow cytometry. I have said we will be studying the characteristics of the cell. But what are those characteristics? Let's see. Three major characters of the cell is studied in the flow cytometry, namely cell size, cell complexity and cell structure. We can check whether cell is small or big and we can check the complexity of the cell. For example, in RBC, the complexity of the cell is very simple. Whereas, if we take neutrophil, it will be highly complex in having uh, many granules and other cellular structures. Now, let's see why we are using this technique. It can be used for cell sorting. It is nothing but cell separation. If we take our blood sample, there will be many types of cells, namely RBC, WBC, platelets, etc., which can be sorted and separated using flow cytometry. Second one is cell counting. We can estimate the number of cells present in our sample. Third is protein expression. We can check whether a particular protein is expressed in our cell or not. Next is cell viability. Based on the signals from the cell and other enzymatic methods, we can detect whether the cell is viable or dead. Next question that comes to your mind is how this technique works. This is simply based on two major principles, namely hydrodynamic focusing and scattering of light. Let's see in detail. Before going into the working mechanism, let's see about major parts in this technique. It includes fluidics, optic system and electronic system. In fluidics, there is a liquid which plays a major role in transporting our sample to the laser beam and all over the system. Optic system comprises of lasers and lenses which will be involved in this analysis. The third important part is electronic system which helps us to understand the results. That is, it receives the signals from the optic systems, amplifies it and converts the amplified signals into graphs which can be interpreted by us. Let's move on to the working mechanism. First principle is hydrodynamic focusing. From the name itself, we can understand hydro means water or liquid, dynamic means moving and focusing is concentrated. Simply, it is the focusing of the cells by moving it in a liquid medium. This helps the cells to move in a flow one by one. If the cells move without a flow, it will cause clusters and some cells may be hidden from the lasers. So, we are using a liquid like sheath through it which gives pressure and makes the cells to move in a flow one by one as shown in this image. So, the laser can focus on one cell at each time and will not leave any cells without studying it. Now, let's move on to the second principle which is the hard piece of flow cytometry that is scattering of light. This principle is nothing but if we place a shining stone on the path of a light the light gets deviated, reflected and it gets scattered in all directions. This scattering will be based on the structure and size of the stone. Same is happening in this technique also. Instead of a stone, there is a flow of cells and light source is laser. As laser focuses on the cells, it gets scattered. There are two major types of scattering, namely forward scattering and side scattering. From this image, we can see that in case of forward scattering, the light that's falling on the cell scatters in a forward direction, whereas in case of side scattering, the light gets scattered all around in all other directions. With forward scattering, we can study the size of the cell. From this image, we can observe, in case of small cells, the forward scattering is less, whereas in, in large cells, the forward scattering is more, and thus produces more signals to the detectors. So simply we can remember, if small cell size is small, there will be small forward scattering and if cell size is large, there will be large forward scattering. In case of side scattering, we can understand the complexity and internal structures of the cells. If the cell is highly complex with more internal structures, the side scattering signal will be high and vice versa. The scattering results are converted to signals and recorded in form of graph. If scattering is high, high signal will be deducted by the deductor and high peaks will be recorded as seen in the graph so that we can interpret the results. Final results of the flow cytometry will be obtained in the form of the histogram as shown in the figure. Two major things can be understood from this graph that is size and complexity of the cells. 
This graph is separated into four major parts. As signals deviate to the top, we can understand that the cells are more complex and as it moves towards right, we can say that cell is larger in size. The top right part, we can observe the cells are large in size and more complex. It includes uh, cells like eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, which are larger in size and also has complex internal structures. So they are in the top right part of the graph. Whereas in bottom right, the cell is larger in size but not more complex. This may, it, this may include cells like monocytes. It is larger in size but the internal structure is not much complex. If we observe at the left to bottom side, cells will be smaller in size and also less complex which includes lymphocytes. In case of protein expression studies, there is a special technique of flow cytometry called fluorescence activated cell sorting which is discussed in detail in another video. Its link is provided in the description. If you cover facts, the complete detail of flow cytometry can be understood. Moving on to the applications, there are many broad applications of flow cytometry. Major application is in molecular biology to study the protein, DNA, that is to study gene expression. In case of immunophenotyping, immunocells can be sorted and be used to study its structure, effect of the drug action on the immune cells, phenotypes and flow cytometry is also used useful in cell biology. In hematology, different cells from a blood sample can be identified, sorted and it can be studied phenotypically. Cells can also be counted and will be used in cell counting. In pharmacology, the action of a drug on various cells can be identified. But it has few limitations. It is expensive as it has a sophisticated instrumental setup with laser focusing, deductor and conversion of the signals to graphs and etc. The second limitation is it is time consuming and since this is a principle oriented technique we should we will be requiring skilled labors so uh, we cannot do it as such the person who is handling the instrument should be skilled and should have complete understanding of the instrument in this video we have seen what is flow cytometry why it is used its important parts its principle its applications and limitations thank you if you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe and do follow the Instagram page of Think Biology Think Vision. Bye.